Welcome to my channel where I talk about stuff and I film stuff and I take pictures of stuff and I talk about how to do that stuff. And today we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. So before we even get into it, I want to say this does not just apply to skateboarding. This applies to all videos. It's just I've noticed a gap in the market pretty much with skateboarding clips where I have not seen anyone do any sort of stylistic color grading to any sort of skating. And I would like to start seeing that. Well, if you're a skateboarder or not a... Whether you're a skateboarder or not, these tips will help you with your videos and make them just look, you know, that just a little bit better. This is my workflow when it comes to color grading. But I'm not a professional, so if I'm doing something you don't like and you prefer it something a little bit different, then do it a little bit different. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. If you're not filming on log, you can pretty much just forget this step and just, you know, move on to step number two. But I'm gonna explain how to do it. Um, a lot of people like to use color space transforms. So it's kind of like a LUT that transforms it into Rec. 709. But I like to make things harder on myself. And then also I feel like I just have a little bit more control over how it looks doing it this way. Go over to the color wheels and adjust the darks down to right before it hits zero. And then go to the highlights and adjust it before it goes over the, the limit. On Final Cut it's like 100, but on DaVinci it's some weird number that I don't remember what it is. Once you're done doing that, you want to adjust the mid-tones and then just sort of, you can just do it how you feel, what you think looks the best. If it does, you can adjust the uh, highlights or the mid, uh, dark tones after you fix the mid-tones. Moving on to step number two is the color mixer. And this is a recent thing that I've started doing is what I, what I feel like helps me get a really good look is going to the color mixer you know there's three columns there's the red green and blue and they all have their respective color up a little bit move all of them up all the way and then what you have is more saturation but you can adjust each of them after that a little bit less red or a little bit less blue or something like that and you can get just a little bit more of style into your uh, video. Slight adjustments, just remember, slight adjustments. You don't want them too far away from each other or else it just ends up being just green or something like that. Which on the step number three, which is the curves. And this is what's gonna give you that good contrast look that's going to make it just stand out. You know, like a little bit more 3D looking. I don't know how to describe where they're at without looking at it. But two, it's a little closer to the middle and then another, and then another one directly in the middle. So that way you have the best control over everything and you can adjust the highlights and the shadows without affecting everything else too much. Go into the darker tones and then bring it down a little bit and then go to the very end of the dark tones, the darkest part, and pull it up just a little bit. And then what I like to do is go to the other end of it, the highlights, and then pull up on it, give it just that little bit more contrast, and then at the very end of the highlights, bring it down just a smidge, and then you go to the mid-tones and the same thing as the converting it to Rec. 709, just to, you know, adjust it as, as need be, whatever, you, whatever look you're trying to go for. And then what I like to do is go into the mask and mask the skin tones, so that way, because when you go into the color mixer and you're adjusting it to where you want it to look like, it's your skin tones are going to be kind of jacked up unless you want it to look like that then leave it as is but what i like to do is at the very end go to skin tones and then adjust those to where they look real or close enough to real not enough not so much to where it doesn't go with the rest of the image but just enough to where it looks real to where people are looking at it and are you know not wondering why it looks like your skin is super yellow so what you want to do is there's a vector scope. You go in the bottom right where it shows the waveform and there's a button over it that says go to vector scope and uh, or you click on it and then it shows vector scope and you click on that. And sometimes the skin tone, there's a line on it that doesn't show up all the time. You can go in and select show skin tones and then it'll show you what this where on the vector scope it's supposed to be on. But once you have the skin tones ma masked out, you go over there and look at that and then it shows where they're at. 
I believe it's just called the global wheel. And then you go and move it in the direction that you want the skin tones to move. Skin tones look perfect. And then you want to adjust the saturation of the skin tones to however you want them to look. I would say don't go super saturated, but also sometimes that looks good. It depends on the image that you're creating. And there you go. That is a quick workflow of how I like to color grade my skateboarding footage. You can use this workflow for any video you're making. It is a very versatile thing. You can adjust everything pretty much however you want. So you just decide what you want yours to look like at the before you start color grading. And then you can pretty much just do everything you want to do with it within these four steps. So you're sometimes you just have to go with a certain look because that's what the situation is but you can always make a good look with where you're at as long as you have enough light honestly so i hope you guys enjoyed this video go click on this one right here because it is awesome and i will see you in the next one